most of the people out there are fucking idiots. And uh, people, if you're watching TV, if you're wasting a beautiful day and you're going to sit down, you don't want to be enlightened with some erudite conversation. You want crazy shit. Jackass trumpets at stupid. No one encourages anyone to get intelligent. You know, it's just not cool. Being stupid is an attractive quality. We don't accept anything on television that isn't, you know, the attention span is like three seconds, and it better be constantly amusing and titillating and sexual. And Half the people out there are fucking retarded. I think it's something to do with people feeling better if they look at other people who are in a worse state themselves. I feel that humans are the stupidest organism species uh, in existence. I allow that they're probably what we recognize as stupidity could be found in other species. But I think we've taken it to an extreme. We're in a giant car heading at a brick wall at 100 miles an hour, and everybody is arguing about where they want to sit. Stupidity is by far the greatest destructive power in the history of humanity. Well, you know, I've always been fascinated by the phenomenon of people following people who are not smart. This is Dudley's world. Called the President of the United States a moron. A moron. 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 He's not a moron at all. Believe me, there is no lack of ignoramuses with PhDs. Many of them teach at Harvard University. We're hardwired to be stupid. Duh. I was stupid. 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 So stupid. The moron. Dumb. Stupid. Stupid. Stupidity. The dumbest. Stupidity. Ignorant. Proud of what you don't know. Everybody says, I think for myself. Nobody tells me what to think. And then when you interview 50 people who all say the same thing and all say they think for themselves and nobody tells them what to think, you realize all of these people are actually stupid. Einstein said that the universe and stupidity are infinite. How do you know stupidity when you see it? Oh, uh, well, it's it's actually fairly difficult to define because you could think, uh, well, somebody could be doing something, you could say, well, that's stupid, when really it could be ignorant, or somebody could be, I don't know, just going out of their mind, and you could say, well, that's not really stupid, now they're cr they're just crazy, and so it's really, it's, it's hard to define. You stupid. I really don't know. Uh, I don't know about that because everybody made mistakes, nobody perfect. Um. I can't really say what I think is stupid because that, again, that'd be my, my opinion. Stupidity is not so cut and dry. For one can be educated and they can at the same time be stupid. It just can't be defined. There really, is, I don't know, there really is no definition of stupid because something could be smart for somebody but not, you know, stupid for somebody else, you know. Ah, uh, stupidity to me would be, um, an inability to function in the reality of the world as a whole, you know? Like, I wouldn't, from, um, oh shit. 
and so it's really it's it's hard to define you can't it, i mean it's i don't even know what the definition is so i really can't say i can't define it people see stupidity everywhere everything is stupid but few can define it people call each other idiot imbecile but few know what the words actually mean when it comes to stupidity we're actually quite ignorant. So how do you make a movie about it? I'd had some personal experience. I'd done a lot of stupid things in my life. We'll keep your resume on file. Throughout my life, a lot of people had assumed I was stupid. In public school, I failed a grade. I was put into remedial English, and I even crapped my pants one of the first days of school. I thought my name might be... Stupid! <laughs> he said you're stupid! My brother is a fucking idiot, and I've had... I worked as a reporter. Welcome to UFO Land, and as a two-bit actor. I told you twice. Quit kicking me in the head. Strangely enough, my biggest success came when I played a moron. Eddie, you're going on a mission. Only one man is dumb enough. I'd seen a big budget movie about intelligence where I saw a lot of people falling asleep. It was then that I realized there were no movies about stupidity. Stupidity was more interesting. That's a really stupid idea. Stupidity was kind of a big topic, so I decided to get some advice. I think you should keep it simple, stupid. Make it fast. Lots of action. You have to find the lowest common denominator. But who was the lowest common denominator? TV programs for them, radio talks to them, and politicians win elections with their help. The lowest common denominator is very powerful, but they don't seem to know it. I had to find them. Bob and Buddy Sue, and little Jimmy, Jerry, and Betty Boo. I know it's dangerous to go down an idiot road. Down an idiot road that drives real fast. They never put the signal on when they want to pass you. They cut you off as they talk on their cell phone. We live in a world that can make us more intelligent than ever. We have more books, more movies, more information than we could possibly use. We have incredible knowledge at our fingertips. Almost anyone can be a filmmaker, or a radio station, or an international publisher. We have thousands of universities, tens of thousands of channels of TV, and millions of websites, and almost as much freedom as we want. We have more potential than ever. So how come so many of us would rather play dumb? It's an acronym for uh, fucked up beyond all recognition. So, uh, where does it come from? Like, um... As far as I know, it's from a, it's a war acronym for when they, you know, when they got to a situation and they had to just quickly describe it. It's a it's foobar. history you'll find lots of people playing playing parts just because that's where they've been like Marilyn Monroe for example played the a really dumb ditzy blonde and she was actually quite intelligent as well I think you just get into those 
Where, where, why? Well, for me, it's like to p play Terry. It, it's sort of like an outlet because you don't have to worry about sounding smart, and so it, you access the dumb part of your brain that you wish you could always be like that and not worry about what people think. Huh. They're playing "Running with the Devil." Running with the Devil. I think it's like going down to the lowest common denominator at this point. I'd say because things are going so accelerated in terms of technology and in terms of our society, it's moving at such a rapid pace. And that people are, you know, maxed out with like special effects, full on, everything is full on and really quick. And so this is almost the opposite. Is the lowest common denominator FUBAR? No. They're just playing dumb. common denominator could be a number of people. It could be the family man. What's a moron? Um, a homeless person, I would have to say. Anybody that can't keep that, a job, uh, anybody that has to rely on alcohol or drugs to, uh, to keep going. What about um, an idiot? An idiot. Well, an idiot would be me. You're looking right at one. Um, anybody that really just is, uh, I don't know, they don't really have a normal concept of thinking. You know, anything Anything catches their eye, uh, they don't really think straight or clear. My girlfriend, she's an idiot too. She even admits it. The one man who embodies the lowest common denominator is Hollywood superstar Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler is probably not dumb at all. I don't think anybody with that much savvy in terms of what his audience wants um, can possibly be done. Always goofy no matter what. He'd been doing a very good job of concealing it until he made Punch Drunk Love and then we realized, no, actually this guy's a lot smarter than any of us really thought he was. I, I, I know in my heart, I've always been pretty, uh, I've worked hard at trying to make funny movies. And I believe in my movies, and uh, I know critically, you know, a lot of critics object to what I do. I did a few interviews uh, for uh, some magazines. I remember reading the article after, you know, after hanging out with this person that I didn't know, share my life with him and talk with him and, and let him into my home and know about my thoughts and whatever and then I would read the article and I would hear you know this guy's a moron and Adam Sandler is kind of a, an interesting example because uh, he plays those lowbrow characters but he's probably smart enough to know what sells stupid is funny basically because people find that funny people will stand up and say I'm I'm poor they'll stand up and say I'm short they'll stand up and say I'm bald they'll say I'm powerless they'll say I have a crappy job they'll say they'll admit all sorts of things about themselves I'm a fucking worthless piece of shit well, you very rarely find anyone who will stand up and say I'm stupid I don't understand a lot of stuff so therefore it's just funny when you see someone else and it's stupidity Go! <laughs> I don't say when uh, we're working on a script, I want to play a uh, uh, big hearted doofus right now. I usually say, uh, well, you know, I want to write a movie that I think is pretty funny. Adam Sandler is a very smart guy. And so actually some of the stuff that he does is quite smart. It's just that we have to keep the smart level down here somewhere, you know. Would a smart guy play dumb to get ahead? Always goofy no matter what. There are only two newspapers in the United States that have websites with more traffic than us. The New York Times and the Chicago Tribune, that's it. We're ahead of everybody else. I hesitate to say going to FARC would be where you would find out more about human nature, but I'm afraid I'm right. <laughs> it's just sad but true.
I think they're worried that we we're coming down from some kind of a high point where we had pure news 100 years ago and we're just fully letting it slide. My opinion on that is I don't think that was ever the case. I think, again, like I said, I think that our our stupidity that's been there all along is just becoming more and more apparent. The website FARC is part of a booming trend towards chronicling stupidity in its many forms. I make a distinction, and there's two categories that are pretty close to that. Stupid and asinine are very similar, uh, but there's a big distinction. Stupid is when one or more people do something to themselves. Asinine is when they do it to somebody who just is walking by. About once every two or three months, somebody somewhere in the world tries to check their gas tank with a big lighter. About once a week, somewhere in the world, somebody gets their penis cut off. Are we becoming a culture for dummies? Are we oversimplifying ourselves back to the dark ages? You know, when thinking started with Adam and Eve, they had a choice. See, they was told the laws of the land do not. God told them, don't eat of the uh, tree of knowledge. From the very beginning, it seems, our world has had an uncomfortable relationship with knowledge and intelligence. One of the most powerful symbols of stupidity, the dunce cap, has an ironic history. John Duns Scotus, who lived in the 13th century, was one of the greatest philosophers of his time. A century later, he was already considered an idiot. You might say science officially discovered stupidity at the turn of the century in Paris. It was then that Alfred Bonnet, a French scientist invented the first stupidity test. It was called the IQ test. The original main IQ test was a test used to find mentally retarded people. And the phrases that were used to describe them, depending on their IQ, were, you know, imbecile, idiot. Those phrases then took on, you know, became stigmatized and took on meanings. You would never call, you, you would certainly never call someone with mental retardation now an idiot. But today, just about everyone gets called an idiot at some point. So what is an idiot? If you agree with the concept of mental age, then most small children would technically be idiots. Adults who act like babies may be huge idiots. Idiots by the original Greek definition, the unelected crowd. Oh, an idiot is someone who literally doesn't go into public life. Ordinary citizens are a bunch of idiots. So the idiot was the origin of us all. This is to say this is a figure that is a clean slate, that has no memory traces, that is prior to language. Could you tell me what the lowest common denominator is? <laughs> idiot. But Bonnet's IQ test also put the word imbecile on the map. An imbecile ranked just slightly higher than an idiot in IQ results. If your IQ was 0 to 25, you are an idiot. 25 to 50, you were an imbecile. The French invention, the imbecile was more mobile than the idiot. Because the imbecile could move, imbeciles are often associated with action, falling down the stairs, dropping things, causing accidents, or killing themselves. There are raging imbeciles and total imbeciles. <laughs> so the original IQ tests were actually developed to exclude people from school. It was testing people uh, that they felt were too dumb. But for the psychologists of the time, idiot and imbecile were not enough. So a new kind of stupidity classification was created. In the early part of the century, Henry Goddard, an American psychologist, translated the IQ test into English. It was a huge hit in America, and soon almost the entire population was being tested. And the IQ test
became the dominant judge of human intelligence. Evidence is mounting now that the IQ test doesn't measure emotional intelligence, street intelligence, gut instinct, general wisdom, sense of humor, and a lot of other things people use to navigate the world. In many cases, girls did better on IQ tests than boys. More sports questions were added, and the balance was redressed. Moron was invented in the town of Vineland, deep in southern New Jersey. Well, on, on the grounds of the training school, we had a research laboratory, and that's where Dr. Goddard worked out of. So since a majority of his work uh, took place out of that facility, which is no longer standing, unfortunately, I would imagine that's where that term was established, just a matter of uh, 100 yards or so from this facility. 1910. In 1910, Dr. Goddard proposed the term moron to identify higher level individuals that were formally labeled uh, feeble-minded. In those days, children that were not very intelligent, put them in a closet, you put them in the attic, and you know, they were abandoned. And he thought that he could train them. So he started giving them special attention, and he was so successful that he decided to enlarge the operation. You know, in the old days, a moron was a person that had a low IQ, but might be a very nice person, might be very sensible, might be very reasonable, maybe a very great person. But now, moron is derogatory. So. What, what are the, some of the, the big inventions that were developed here in Vineland that you know about? Uh, the big inventions? Uh, the biggest one was, like, probably the, um, I have no clue. They invented the word moron here. I'm sorry? The, the word moron was invented here. No, invented the word moron. Wow. No, I did not know that. It's surprising that we use that word a lot. Don't know that it comes from here, though. That word? That word was invented here in, in Vineland. Oh, I don't know that. Do you know that? Yeah. Moron. What is moron? Hey, that's cool. Moron? Yeah. You use that word? He never uses that word? You, nah. you never use the word? You, don't, you never use the word? See, that's <laughs> the white folks' word. It isn't that an interesting fact that the people in Vineland have very little concept of this? I think they should give everybody a day off, moron, make it moron day. Everybody get a day off of work. You know what I mean? Like that. Moron day, you know. But just make a note that people in Vineland are not morons, but we just celebrate that day because the word was made up in Vineland. How does it make you feel that Vineland is the home of, of the word moron, invented the word moron? Kind of stupid. I think they were trying to prove how heredity was the basis of intelligence. If your mother is stupid and your father is stupid, you're going to be stupid, you know, it's one of these things. Goddard believed stupidity was genetic. Stupid parents would have stupid children. Goddard believed that America was being quietly flooded with morons, imbeciles, and idiots. On Ellis Island, Goddard personally IQ tested immigrants. And millions of these people were coming in every year. So the pressure is on the sociologists in, of those days to come up with something where they could say, yeah, this guy is okay. I mean, you know, he, he does have a brain. Thousands of immigrants, many who didn't speak English, were labeled morons and deported. Later, Goddard is said to have regretted publishing his books about genetic stupidity. Although he later recanted his theories, Goddard's books were translated into German where they inspired, among others, the Nazis. Morons were some of the first Germans sent to the gas chamber. One reason why stupidity may seem so cool is because intelligence doesn't often look smart.
Universities are beer halls. Dumb is sexy. Is there any sign of any intellectual activity in, at your university? What, what do you mean by intellectual? People reading books, somebody playing the violin, intellectual debate, that kind of thing? No, man. Partially because of the IQ test, our whole concept of who is smart and who is dumb may be completely wrong. When I was in elementary school, uh, they would give us these group IQ tests. And when the school psychologist would come in the classroom, I would freeze because I knew what she was coming for. And uh, I did really poorly on the test. Uh, so poorly that when I was in sixth grade, I was sent back to a fifth grade classroom to retake the fifth grade test, presumably because they thought that the sixth grade test would be too hard for me. And the result was that for the first three years of school, my teachers had low expectations for me because after all, I was stupid. And they treated me like I was kind of stupid and I acted like I was kind of stupid because, you know, you, you often act the way people expect you to. This is part of a more general trend in psychology, I think, historically, where we've been very deficit-focused. We focus on what's wrong with people, whether it's what makes them stupid or what makes them uh, uh, have sad moods or what makes them have uh, delusions and hallucinations or what makes them violent. We don't focus much attention on what makes people happy, what makes people live a rich life, what makes people have great relationships, what makes people peace-loving. What's the point in going to school? if the world doesn't want you to be smart. In fact, that's a lot of what education is about from the very beginning. It's to make you passive and obedient and not to raise too many problems and so on. So yeah, there are efforts to control people and make them more stupid. But really, really, it's just a, a very narrow slice of what it means to be smart that happens to be a good predictor of how people will do in school and other scholastic settings. But there are many other ways to be smart in this world. With the popularity of the IQ test, science clearly identified the dumb. But what about people with high IQs? Are they beyond stupidity? The initial idea for the book was during the Clinton administration because there seemed to be so many smart people in both parties who were acting in stupid ways. When you're talking about people doing the kinds of stupid things like you'd see at Enron, they commit four fallacies. They've been so rewarded in their lives that they become very focused and centered on themselves and they stop caring about outcomes for other people. The second fallacy is what I call the omniscience fallacy, and that is most of these very smart people surround themselves by sycophants. They start to think they know everything. Uh, so part, part of wisdom is knowing what you don't know. These people, instead of becoming wise, become foolish. The third fallacy is what I call the omnipotence fallacy. They start to think they're all powerful and they start acting as though they can do anything they want. And the fourth fallacy is what I call the invulnerability fallacy. And that is they start to think they're Superman. So if you put those four fallacies together, what can happen is that very smart people start to do incredibly stupid things. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, and not a single time. Never. All of these people, by any standard, would have done very well on IQ tests, SATs. Why didn't, Why didn't, I, didn't I just, I just stay, stay overnight? overnight? But they acted in ways that were stupid. Why didn't, Why didn't I take, I take a, cab? a cab? There are, there are no, no sensible, sensible answers, answers to those, those questions. questions. How, How could, could I have been so, so stupid? stupid? Is it possible that we're all stupid? Stupidity and intelligence had nothing to do with education. Education is terribly important. But there are people with not much formal education who are extremely bright. And I've met university professors who are totally stupid. What I think is, look, there's book smart, there's street smart, 
there's common sense. And you get many a guy who graduated from Harvard and, and can't get along in the real world. He can't function. It's almost like an idiot savant. And yet you got some street guy that grew up that didn't graduate high school that's a multimillionaire and owns a trucking company. You know, I know manual workers who are, I think, smarter than the people in the faculty clubs and solve harder problems. They're just happy having their nine to five job. The kids jump on them when they come home. Like I said, they eat a plate of pasta. Sunday they get along with their family. I don't think they're dumb guys. I just think they maybe they're the smart ones that know what they want out of life. Probably from the beginning of recorded time, people made themselves look smart by calling other people dumb. But few things make us feel smarter than distancing ourselves from cavemen. In urban human circles, a monobrow immediately denotes lower intelligence. What was it like to wear those kind of eyebrows? <laughs> <laughs> it was like, uh, I don't, I don't understand the question. Was, you put, you stick them in and uh, you go to work. I guess, how did it make you feel? Did you feel more intelligent or less intelligent? <laughs> No, it, it didn't make me feel more intelligent, it made me feel, feel more hairy. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, you're welcome to try it, maybe it'll make you feel better. Yes, <laughs> I will. <laughs> I used to have one eye. I was stupid enough to go and go through the pain of plugging them, and of course now I needed them. The rise of the internet heralded a grand new age of new media, new technology, and new intelligence. The low-cost, high-access internet is going to cause an explosion of information and officially empower intelligence. The decline of the information age, I think people want stupid media as a break from all this information influx that they're getting. You're just like bombarded by, with so much information anyway, so you don't really want to know about important things anymore. You just want to see you know, slapstick, you want to see some tits and ass, you want to see some slapping, you want to see some people hurting each other on TV. You just want it. And people, you know, we're giving it to them because it's just getting easier and easier to make stuff. And it's also on the other end of it is that there's just so many avenues for immediate release of information. And when you're all about immediacy, you run out of things to say. And when you run out of things to say, you just say the stupidest things. Is the internet a virtual lowest common denominator? If our culture is hooked on stupidity, and if stupidity can be dangerous, should we be worried that there is hardly any research on this subject? Surprisingly, there are few books. All the academic texts ever written on the subject could barely fill half a shelf. Up until now, there's been almost no study by serious academicians on stupidity. Uh, most of the books that have been written, and there are only about seven or eight, are really anecdotal books. They just really give you a whole string of examples of stupid behavior. And they're interesting books, they're amusing, they're fun to read, but everybody knows there's a lot of stupidity. That, that's nothing new. And when you read all those books, you don't come out really having learned anything other than that more stupid people than you realize. I've never found anyone who had a decent definition of intelligence or stupidity. We don't really know what it is, but it's there. We're scared of it. I mean, is there any systematic study of stupidity, or has there ever been? Not that I know of. Well, I had a great deal of trouble getting the book published because uh, publishers just wouldn't touch it. Twenty years ago, stupidity was an absolute taboo topic. It just was not popular at all. I uh, liken it to diarrhea today. Nobody wants to talk about it. It's something you have to live with, but nobody would analyze it or have anything to do with it. The other thing is that it's scary because we are all a little bit stupid and we don't particularly want to admit it. According to Marx already, stupidity was third in terms of world historical f determining forces. First, as we of course know, there was capital that determined world events and world history. Then there was violence and stupidity comes in third as being absolutely 
crucial and determinant in the shaping and contouring of world events. If you don't see too many uh, books on the serious psychology bookshelves uh, that have to do with stupidity. And I think part of the problem is, is, is anytime you study something negative, it gets stigmatized. And somehow, um, people worry about kind of a contagion. <laughs> What, you think you're so smart that you can uh, see, your, see a distance or establish a distance between yourself and stupidity? Or are you so stupid that you don't even know you're stupid? I've always felt that people will, will, will choose to be stupid, a little bit stupid at least, out of fear. They're afraid that that the truth, the intelligent truth, would be so depressing and would be so hopeless that they'd rather not hear it or see it or find out about it. It's a lot easier to be stupid in the U.S. than it is to be smart and stand up and be accused of not being for freedom, not being patriotic, and not feeling sorry for the victims of September 11th. As long as we don't know what stupidity is, how can we know what knowledge is? We are very stupid. Einstein said that the universe and stupidity is are infinite, but he's not so sure about, um, no, excuse me, he says, Einstein says that the universe and stupidity are limited, but he's not so sure about, um, No academic research, few books, and no emergency government inquiries into stupidity. With a modern kind of energy, stupidity has gone from a taboo topic to prime time entertainment. We're living in the lowest common denominator's paradise. TV shows are competing to see which is the stupidest. And of course, the most primal concept. Wins. Is it possible that stupidity is not just the absence of intelligence, but a force of its own? I do think that we are becoming stupider and stupider when it comes to dating. I mean, if you look at you know some of the reality shows on television and watch people going out on dates, it's absolutely um, astounding. You know, I mean, there was a whole that stupid book, The Rules. I mean, it basically told people, women, to be stupid. <laughs> Make sure that he feels smarter. That's amazing. More interesting, really, because, you know, otherwise you're going to intimidate him. I mean, part of it is our silly pandering to the youth. And youth, as anyone with any intelligence knows, are not the smartest people. That's why they're young. They haven't learned as much. Other societies don't even have to be reminded of these things. It's just part and parcel of it that you venerate the older people because they're wiser. Duh. Programming that tries to appeal to the lowest common denominator, that's simplistic. Are you dumb? Um, dumb. Lowest moments. moments. Is often effective in bringing more audience to the set. Sex and violence. It's an angel. They have these intense research screenings. So if this person doesn't like this and this person doesn't like that, and don't offend that group and don't say this and don't do that and don't do this. In other words, we are being spoon-fed baby food. Many people accuse the world's greatest film industry, Hollywood, of deliberately dumbing people down by appealing to the laziest, dumbest responses in all of us. Perfect bodies making perfect love in a perfect world. There are two ways in which Hollywood infantilizes the population. One is by only feeding us a, a diet of children's stories. But another way is by so controlling the publicity and, and distribution of art in general. Their power is so great that they manage to squeeze out mo most other uh, forms of art. And obviously, there's a real seduction to, to stupidity. You know, I guess it's the unwritten truth. That's that's what uh, Hollywood actors, in particular, are are ideally supposed to be: are blank slates. You know, the majority of them have never finished high school, including people you would you would think, considering their image, would have like people like uh, Uma Thurman, never finished high school. She she, had, she has a, a academic father, but there you are. It's mostly they're discovered. You know, like Keanu Reeves, people like that. 
it's, it's why part of the time they, they sort of foster a fake kind of book learning. It's why you'll find them in Vanity Fair and the thing Celebrity Bookshelf, you know, what's, what am I reading now? And it's usually something metaphysical because they don't have the, the, the uh, discipline of mind to separate, you know, things that are rubbish. And if you think about it, I mean, what is the age that you need to get discovered by? You need to be a teenager. So you really don't have time to finish your BA and then go off to Europe. You're going to be getting kind of long in the tooth by the time you come back and you're ready for your close-up in Maxim. That's entertainment. What about news? Surely current affairs are not programmed for the lowest common denominator. But first, these government press releases read by a fashion model. Headline. In the United States now, they're starting to lay music beds on news stories, which was verboten for many, many years. But it's, it's becoming more and more show business all the time. And uh, it's the type of thing that the average viewer, although people are pretty TV literate now, might necessarily notice that there's violins playing in the back during that news piece. The media is about dumbing down. The media is about simplifying. The media is about the 20-second the sound bite. I've worked as a journalist for various different uh, media, pro broadcast and print. And every different magazine and newspaper will have a different rule that they tell you uh, about the age level of their presumed audience. And it's always much younger than, than, than the adults you know to be reading it. So, so in certain extreme cases, I've been told, you're writing for a, for a grade 8 audience. Um, at more sophisticated newspapers, I've been told, you're writing for a high school audience. Um, I know for certain broadcasters, I've been told, you're writing for grade 10 uh, audience. Uh, they're terrified of alienating viewers or listeners. And they know that if, if there are too many words people don't understand, they're going to flip to something easier. The most successful program format on cable television in America is what? Wrestling. Wrestling is the most successful. And that's why a lot of the panel shows and discussion shows of television are based on wrestling. It's survival of the most psychotic. Well, I think the worst thing that TV does to you is make you think you're more powerful than you are. It makes you assume that all this information coming to you, you must be important. You have to decide something. You have to decide. You have to decide. No, you don't. The, the big lie is the world's a more increasingly complex place. The world's increasingly complex. No, it isn't. Real TV's been on for how many years? You know, you want to see someone get gored by a bull. You know, you want to see a monkey in a diaper. You want to see crazy stuff. Suddenly, you know, you realize you're sitting there your mouth feels like cloth. Your chest is covered with potato chip crumbs. You got a sour feeling like you've been, you know, sleeping on the floor. Uh, you're all alone. You don't exactly know what you've been watching for all this time. You've been vaguely alarmed and vaguely aroused, but you're frustrated because there's been no release. That's a really crummy feeling. And, you know, as bad as it is for adults, it's positively criminal to subject children to that kind of thing. I think you want entertainment. You don't want to, you know, have some journalistic probing, you know, changing the world with enlightenment. You know, we're, we're, we like to think that we're that smart, but we're not that smart. We're still stupid flesh monkeys. We haven't evolved to this point that we think that we are. We still like to watch retarded things happen on TV. I think a lot of the dumbing down of films that really done in